Hello, everyone. Welcome, Conversationally Family. We are back with another interview with a fabulous fitter that is my acquaintance in well, Collymore, uh, in the city of Toronto, where she works. Her name is Yasmin Edgbeck, and she has 30 years of experience, which is incredible to think about. She started her career working with jokes as a fitter before moving to the Canadian Compound Pharmacy in Etobicoke, and she's been there for 28 solid years helping lymphedema patients, of course, thrive in their lives and do well by wearing great garments recommended by her, of course, with a little help from the therapist. Welcome, Yasmin. Thank you very much. All right, so this interview today will focus more on what you should look for in a fitter and how you know you're working with a really good fitter, and I'm going to take the first question. So Yasmin, can you give us a general idea of what uh, is required for uh, someone to become a fitter, what they have to learn, what courses they might have to take? Okay, so it's there's no institute or course or anything like long-term. Um, basically, you need to attend seminars that are um, put on by the manufacturers of compression garments, um, and they are offered uh, several times a year by uh, most of the companies. Um, and so you just kind of accumulate this uh, uh, amount of, of learning over time. And of course, on the job is <laughs> always the best way to, to, to learn that. Um, and, and then if you're applying for the, uh, to be a fitter for the assistive devices program, which uh, most people are when they, they are fitting patients with lymphedema, um, you have to apply to the government to the store, first of all, has to be a vendor for the products. And then uh, they have to have a certified fitter on staff. And that fitter has to be uh, has to have a certificate from each company and each product or item that they would be fitting for people who have lymphedema. So right. that's basically it. Okay. I just want to interject for people who, because we have a international audience, that mm -hmm. when she mentions ADP, that's the Ministry oh. of Ontario program here in uh, Canada where we live, and so that's what she's referencing because that's where we work. But it will be different in different jurisdictions. Just to clarify. Right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So next question, obviously, then, is what type of questions should lymphedema patients uh, ask to determine that they're working with someone who's actually certified with that knowledge and is a good fitter to go to? Well, obviously, you know, asking if they're, uh, you know, in our case, if we're registered with the government for the, the program that helps to pay for the garments um, and just kind of general knowledge questions of to get a sense of if if they know what they're talking about. So, you know, what kind of compression levels are available and what kind of garments are available and are, are garments, do they come custom made or are they ready made? And um, just really sort of more detailed and specific things, which as a patient, you may not know. Uh, right. So sometimes you have to do a bit of homework probably to, to find out uh, that kind of information. And, and really how many years have you been working? Uh, you know, what companies do you work with? What products do you carry? Right. Uh, so that should kind of weed it out a little bit. Right. I think that's one of the things that, you know, depending on where you're coming from with your diagnosis, heading to a fitter, you may be prepared with some of that information. You may not, or you maybe have experienced it virtually through someone else mm -hmm. to have some awareness, but definitely I agree asking years and products. I think really helps to to get a keen eye on on who might actually have some good experience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I also think based on my experience as well, I think shopping around is a good thing. If you go somewhere and you don't get a good vibe, I walked out of a place I won't mention when I first got diagnosed. I just didn't feel good about it. Yep. And I ended up planning the, the time at the time for me, a fitter of my dreams and work with her for mm -hmm. like, I, I'm the same way. Years, so like, same way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's like most things. It's like when you go to a psychologist or, or, you know, any kind of therapy, if you don't like the person the first time, you might try again. But really, if you're getting that vibe, just like you said, there's always another one. Yes. You know, there is another option. It, it may be a little bit more challenging, but if it doesn't feel right, exactly. don't go with it. Go yeah. with what feels good, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So what should a uh, lymphedema patient who recently diagnosed their very first fitting, what should they expect and how should they prepare when they're coming to see a fitter for the first time? Okay. So obviously we're going to talk about um, their lymphedema and what kind of garment has been recommended for them. 
Um, I would go over the compression levels that are available if it hasn't already been suggested. And um, that does have to be prescribed by the doctor. So um, if they haven't gotten enough uh, of a recommendation uh, from, from their doctor or from a therapist, then I do encourage them to go back and, and get that. Uh, and if they have insurance coverage, of course, that's always something that's necessary. Um, also, if they have, uh, 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 sometimes I get a sheet of uh, recommendations from a therapist. So that's always been really helpful because that can kind of uh, speed things along and we don't have to, to sort of go over things unnecessarily. Um, I also like to know generally what kind of a lifestyle they have. Um, if they're, how active they are, if, they, if there's someone who if they have a job, let's say they're sitting a lot, um, their needs for garment may differ from someone who's very active. Um, and so we can adjust those things uh, in terms of style so that they're more comfortable, so that they'll wear their garments and, and, and then benefit from the garments themselves. Um, I also go over the differences between custom and off the shelf. If, if it's been recommended that they get a custom or it's obvious that they get a custom made garment, then um, I don't go over you know, um, ready-made garments too much, but sometimes it is a choice. And sometimes we'll start um, more conservatively because it's something new and you never know how someone's going to react and uh, what their compliance uh, level is going to be. Um, so those are the kind of things we discuss. And then we get into, you know, colors and fabrics. Sometimes we can do that. Um, but just kind of a general knowledge of what to expect. I try not to bombard people with too much you must do this and you must do that because it, it's a hard thing you're dealing with someone who's going through a whole bunch of other things so you know you have to kind of be gentle and and, and get a sense of what they can handle at that moment um in terms of what they should bring if uh and again in our case um because it's government uh, sponsored then you need to bring some information um that would pertain to that um wearing Comfortable clothing is also a really good thing because I'm measuring people and sometimes I have to measure, you know, really up high on the leg or they have to, uh, you know, remove their top if I'm measuring for their arms. So um, we want them to be comfortable. Um, so, so clothing that, that can really move out of the way is, is the best thing. They bring their own shorts. Um, that's a really good uh, thing to do. And then they're wearing their own clothes. They feel comfortable. Um, and we're going to have a better result if they're comfortable and, and if, if, if we can access uh, their arm or their leg properly for the measurements. I know one of the things that was recommended to me was to make sure that I came, you know, not fresh as a daisy is, is a nice <laughs> way to put it, but just to know that my skin's clean, um, you know, that I'm not trying to come to a fitter after working out and doing those types of things because mm -hmm. it's going to be different and could affect your measurements even mm -hmm. versus when you're just coming in without having done anything drastic beforehand. Yeah. Um, and the comfortable clothes, absolutely, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Um, especially if you're doing lower, I think um, comfortable clothes is an absolute must because it also facilitates you being able to get to them without necessarily having to undress or disrobe too much, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And also it's, it's good. And, uh, you know, this is where Bisa, your, your role is to, you know, not send them to me <laughs> or to us as fitters until their swelling has gone down and they've been able to reduce the swelling. So um, coming after a uh, massage therapy is a really good time. Yeah. Uh, morning coming in the morning is always preferred for measuring. Um, yes. uh, I do try with my the edema is, is yeah. far less. So yeah, I yeah. try with my patients to have them come the day before or the morning of, and then they head right there, like so yeah. on yeah. their way soon after yeah. the massage. So then they're as small as possible when they get fitted for the garment, which is great, right? For everybody concerned. So yeah. 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 Well, that's I think ultimately the goal, right? The smaller you can be, the smaller you can stay, type of idea. Exactly. exactly. Right? Because as as Maria uh, talked about uh, the, the last garment that we, we interview to so the garment keeps you to one size when you have an elastic garment with bandages they help to reduce you so when you get a measure for a garment if you're smaller already then you're going to have a smaller garment for the yeah, duration of time exactly. yeah all right and what is the number one thing you wish more than for patients knew or understood about 
garment use and the importance of wearing compression garments? Well, I think especially with custom made garments, um, I really would like people to wear everything that they get right away, not all at the same time. <laughs> so if they're getting two sets of garments, you know, wear one one day, the other one the next day and alternate them and don't save garments because uh, the warranties on these things are very short, it's usually only a month, um, depending probably of course where you live. And uh, if when, once it's out of the warranty, it's really hard to change something or correct something. So wearing all your garments right away um, is good to know so that you'll know if, they, if there are any issues. Defects show up very quickly, so um, you don't have to you know, wait months and months to see if something's defective. Um, and uh, it's not good to store garments because they do lose their, their elasticity over time. So, and you can change over time. So wear everything all at once. Don't hold on to old garments because if, especially in custom made, which is so precise, if you're wearing something that you wore a year ago when your, your leg was bigger um, and then you start wearing it again, it's just gonna allow, allow the, the swelling to, to come back. So you really have to get rid of old garments and it can be hard to do because you're paying a lot of money for something that still looks really good. Um, so it's really hard to get rid of those things. So I really try to encourage people not to, to you know, stockpile that kind of stuff. Also alternating your garments is important. So wearing one one day, one the other the next day, and that gives the garments a chance to rest and uh, allow the elastic to return to its um, uh, unstretched state. Uh, so you get better support. And of course, care for the, caring for the garment. So washing them after each use, it's really important according to the manufacturer's instructions. And um, that's, those are really the things, but it, it's, it's really you know, wearing all your garments and letting your fitter know if there's a problem right away. Even if you can't come in, um, if let's say it's close to the warranty and uh, there's a problem, but you can't come in to see your fitter, then, uh, as a fitter, I can call the company and say, this is a, the problem with the garments from this person. So they can extend that for us and, uh, until the patient can come in because we have, everybody has a life. And if you're also dealing with other medical issues and appointments, then um, you can't be expected to drop everything and come in. So that's, there is a provision for that. So just let us know. <laughs> I didn't know that the garment companies are that flexible. That's good to know. So I can inform my clients as well. Thanks for sharing that. I think mo most are, <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> I, think, I think that's the reality too. I mean, a lot of our garments aren't produced here, right? They're produced in other countries. That's right, yeah. And that, that makes a big difference because there has to be some kind of an allowance for that. Yes. Um, I know too what you mentioned about making sure that you're not hoarding on all your older garments is so true. Um, I know my particular fitter has me actually, she gets very upset with me if I've kept something a little bit longer and she makes me actually bring them in for my next appointment and we cut them so that they cannot be used. Um, yeah, it, it, it breaks my heart because as you said, it might still look great, mm -hmm. but its functionality is not there anymore, right? It's not at its top performance. So yeah. it definitely is, is something. Um, and also, like you said, to make sure that care, it, that care of the garments is, is very important and having that alternate. And while it may be cost prohibitive for some people to look at getting multiple garments, mm -hmm. it's so important, as you said, to have that flexibility to switch out to, so that the garment can rest, mm -hmm. so it can do its job better. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great point to bring up for people. And each company has little variations in the care. So yeah, it's really important to, especially if you're wearing, if you've worn companies from different, sorry, garments from different companies to make sure that you're washing them and drying them as is recommended by that particular manufacturer. Great. Yeah. So can you show us some examples of a garment that most people probably aren't necessarily aware of as it being a complement to perhaps an arm sleeve, a gauntlet or a glove? Could you show us an example? And could you also explain when you would re recommend one versus the other? Because they are different. So a gauntlet has the thumb enclosed, but not the fingers. So it ends on the knuckles and uh, the fingers are free. And the glove, obviously, the fingers are uh, enclosed in fabric. They are open tip for 
almost everybody I've ever fit. Um, it's an open tip glove. You can get it closed, but most people like to have an open tip because you get that tactile uh, uh, feelings uh, <laughs> to use still. So, um, so that's basically it. I um, Usually people, when patients come, they will already have a recommendation from their therapist. But if there's a kind of a question about it or somebody who's just kind of getting information, then I'm going to look at their hands and, and uh, see if, if I can see swelling. And if, uh, and, and if I don't, then I'll ask the patient, do your fingers ever get puffy? Do your rings fit? Um, so that's, you know, if, if the swelling goes into the hand, then obviously you're going to want to um, have a glove. And the lengths, of course, can, can be uh, altered as well. So it's not just a, a set length. Uh, the gauntlet, it would be more for someone who's maybe got just a little bit in the, uh, in the, there on the top of their hand, right. um, or even just as a preventative uh, measure so that if they've got a sleeve on, uh, the sleeve doesn't sort of trap the fluid in the hand. So it's just kind of a little encouragement in that sense. But I, I fit in far more gloves than I do gauntlets. So yes. So is there one more garment you want to show us? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought, yeah. The So <laughs> so the one that um, a lot of people like, and it has been around for a while, because I have an orange sleeve here. Um, and this is a chip foam nighttime garment. Um, so inside this are uh, pieces of foam that are different sizes and different densities. Um, and they're sewn into these little um, compartments. Um, and what they do is they produce kind of a hill and valley um, type of pressure. So that's been uh, very successful in, in, in moving the fluid um, out of the limb. These, uh, these little channels are not just to contain the foam chips. They're also, they also channel the fluid uh, up out of the limb to, uh, to get into the torso so that it can be gotten rid of. <laughs> um, so these are... They're really nice and soft. Some of them are thicker than others. This is uh, one of the original ones. Um, and this company, which is Tribute, they um, they may have come up with a, a same thing, but the fabric or the, the garment is half the thickness and just as effective. Um, so it's it's some people really like this. It's really it's really cozy. Like it's a nice soft, cushy thing. Um, it in, generally includes, and uh, there are several companies that make these both custom made and off the shelf. Um, with the custom made, there's usually at least one alteration included uh, in the price of the garment. Um, so it's it's just it's a really nice thing. So in, in, as an alternative to wrapping at night, because wrapping uh, is, is such a time consuming uh, activity. Um, so these have been really good um, in the lower extremity in like the, for for uh, a leg. Um, it's not something that you would walk around with. So these really are for sleeping in. And you can wear it when you're awake, of course, and, you know, watching TV or reading or, or something. So is there yeah, anything they, else you'd like to share regarding working with a fitter as a lymphedema patient before we go? Um, well, I think just, you know, be aware that, especially when you're starting out on this, this journey of compression, um, to know that your needs can change over time. Obviously, you're, you know, if, the, if everything's working well and the fluid is reducing, then you're going to be smaller and you're going to need uh, different sized garments. But also, um, over time, people can um, change, their tolerance can change for compression. So you kind of have to be aware of that as well. Um, and it's, you know, important, of course, to let, let your fitter know if you're having any issues. Uh, um, and the fitter may not be able to answer the question, but can will at least know who, you know, to refer you to in, uh, to, to solve the problem. But um, it's, it's important to let the fitter know if there's anything you need to change, if there's something you didn't like, um, so that we can help you, you know, get a, have garments that are, are garments that you want to wear or that you're comfortable wearing. You may not want to wear them, I should say, but <laughs> that you're at least comfortable wearing. And, uh, and again, you know, just look after your garments properly and then you don't have to come see us that often. <laughs> so. Brilliant. Thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. And uh, it's, it's nice to, to help send out this information to others because it's such a small field. And, and I think it's, it's 
it's good that you're doing this and congratulations to both of you for that. Thank you Thank so much. You.